Welcome back to Ride and Glide Reviews. Today, we're lucky enough to be reviewing the newest model from Apollo, the Phantom. This is packed with amazing features. We're gonna go over it in the studio, then we're gonna take it out onto the hard ground, we're gonna go and race it, see how fast we can get at top speed. We're gonna do an acceleration test, hill climb, braking, and then we're gonna take it off-road and see what it can do. So the first thing we notice about the Apollo Phantom is the styling. We've got this futuristic, sleek look with the silver front arms here and the rest black. The lights give it that futuristic look as well as the stem and the way the handlebars are molded really looks like a very, very modern machine. Starting down at the bottom, we'll take a look at the wheels. Now Apollo have put 10 by 3.25 inch wheels on these. That's a very wide wheel for this size scooter, which is gonna give loads of grip, loads of traction when you're pulling away and riding at speeds. Housed within the tires are two 1200 watt brushless motors. This can take it up to speeds of around 40 mile per hour, maybe even more with a lightweight rider on. Sitting in front of the motor, we've got the brake disc. Now on a lot of scooters, you get 145 mils. These are 160 mils standards, which because they're bigger, give you that extra braking power. So on top of the disc, we've got the caliper. These particular calipers or these, this brake system is a mechanical disc brake. Whereas you can have the option, you can have nut hydraulic brakes or the standard mechanical discs, which are great as well. Coming down to the swing arms, which we've already said this nice silver futuristic color. You can see we've got the coil spring in here. There's also one on the other side and two on the rear. So it's quadruple coil shocks on this. They are adjustable slightly. They're sprung, so they're not oil dampened, but you can change how hard or soft they are slightly with a, with a wrench or a spanner. It's quite easy to adjust them just here at the top. Above the wheel, we have the fender. So this molded futuristic look again, provides plenty of cover for all that muck spitting up stopping it getting all over your clothes. Coming down to the main deck of the scooter, you can see along the side, we've got the two charge ports. These can be used individually or in dual mode, or you can even use a fast charger on these. We've got the 52 volt, 23.4 amp hour battery. We're gonna do a full range test on that later, but that's quite a large battery, so we're hoping for 40 miles plus. These charge ports should charge that in around six to eight hours if you're using both of them. We've got the additional headlights down here and the same on the other side. So they're just to give the scooter a bit more visibility from the sides, whereas the main headlight, as you'll see shortly, gives loads of headlight out to the front. And we've got the rear light at the back as well. These are just to make it visible from all round. Coming up onto the deck, we've got a very, very comfortable rubber mat the whole way along the deck. This is really good for grip, but also nice and comfortable on your feet when you're riding. As we've said, we've got the battery housed in the deck. Also, we've got the two 25 amp controllers as well in there. So as we've said, behind the controllers is the battery. The battery is built with DynaVolt cells, so really high quality battery cells. And Apollo say that this can take 500 charge cycles without any degradation of the battery. Coming back off the back of the deck here, we've got the footrest. So a very substantial chunky piece of metal here to rest your foot against or your rear foot when you're riding. Also, you can see on that, that's where the rear light is. If I pull the brake, you'll be able to see that that flashes when the brakes are engaged. Also, just down here, you'll see some more lights. These are for the indicators. So I reach across and switch them on, click them off. Really good safety feature that is obviously for visibility when you're turning and also at night as another bit of visibility in the dark. Down below the rear footrest, you can see once again, we've got the dual coil suspension, the same as at the front. As we said earlier, so there are four in total, two front, two back. Like the front, they're also adjustable, as we spoke about earlier. We've got the nice silver gray rear swing arms that look sleek, fitting in with the styling of the scooter. And as you can see there, we've got the nice big fender coming up, covering a lot of the wheel, those fat tires, which is gonna stop, again, all that dirt and muck flicking up over your clothes. We've got the caliper and the braking system the other side, we've already shown you that at the front. And as you can see, those nice big wide tires again. Inside them, we've got the motor, another 1200 watt brushless motor, same as the front. So that's 2400 watts nominal, 
think it's 3,200 watts peak you're gonna get out of that. So it's pretty powerful for a 52 volt. From the back of the scooter, we move down to the front again. You've got an 18 centimeter clearance from ground to the bottom of the scooter, which is quite high. I mean, it's gonna be able to go over quite a few different types of terrains. That mixed with the suspension and the wide wheels, they've got a lot of grip on them. It's gonna make this scooter very versatile and go on hard ground. Hopefully, as we're gonna test later, you're gonna see it go off-roading as well. The main deck itself, is 21 and a half centimeters wide by about 51 centimeters long. So a very wide deck with that footrest, that clearance. It's gonna make it really comfortable even for those bigger riders. From the deck, we come up to the chunky front swing arm here. We've get this double reinforced stem. What's really unique about this is the folding mechanism. Very stiff, very secure. I'll show you how it works now. So first of all, you pull the safety pin out. I'll turn it around so you can see. Push down the catch. That releases the hook here. Once that's released, it will fold down. At the back, we have a clip that goes into a hole and that allows you to pick it up. Now, being 34 kilos, it's fairly heavy, but it does make it portable. And that locking clip allows you to pick it up with one hand. Then to re it up, fold it back in. Watch this clip here. That clips down, or the hook hooks down under the metal insert. Push that clip back up and then for safety, we lock that in. So triple folding mechanism there. Very, very rigid, very safe. So moving up from the stem, we showed you the clip earlier, which locks it in when it's folded down. We come up to the handlebars. So we've got a molded handlebar here, coming into two ergonomic grips and the mechanical brake levers here. Just to the left, we've got the control panel, as you can see, which is the mode setting and the speed setting that changes. This will also allow you to get into the P settings, as we'll show you in a second. Next to that, we've got the thumb throttle, which is for the um, acceleration. Sometimes they have a finger, but this has a thumb, which is very nice, very smooth, and we're gonna test that out later. Next to that is a key start. Really nice safety feature again. So without that, you can't turn the scooter on and off. Moving across, we'll skip the display just for a second. Coming over to the left-hand side, we've got the dual motor button, the two indicator buttons here, turning them on and off, and then the light button at the front. Now I want to take your attention right into the middle here and down onto the display screen, this hex display screen, which is a very, very clear, easy to see, and has loads of features. So we'll start with what's on there at the moment. This is your speed. So we're in kilometers at the moment, that can be changed to miles per hour. We've got zero start set, you can see there. We're in single motor. Now the only way I know that is because when I press this button, which is the dual motor button, the sport comes on, and that tells you it's in dual motor. So I'll take that off again. This one tells you what ride mode you're in. Now this is basically a speed restriction. So when I press up, I go two, three, like most scooters has three ride modes. One will be restricting you around 15 kilometers an hour, 130, and then one's gonna be, the number three is gonna be unlimited. The ring around the outside is nice visually, but also when you press the brake, that flashes to let you know the brakes are applied they also cut the motor. Now, when I go to the mode button over here, if you take a look here, you see the battery gauge down at the bottom, and this is uh, ride time. So obviously we haven't been doing anything, it just says seven seconds. But if I flick through the modes, you've got the trip, so how far you've gone. You've got the odometer, so that's gonna be how many miles or kilometers you've done in total. We've got the voltage. Now that is often more accurate than the actual battery percentage left, so 52.6 at the moment. So we're about just over three quarters battery, something like that. That will go all the way up to around 58 volts on a 52 volt battery scooter as its top voltage. Remaining, so this is estimating how many kilometers you've got left in range, so 48 kilometers left. That's very useful, um, so you don't get caught short uh, miles away from home. And then back to the beginning again. So loads of features there. So additionally, you can also see when I press the light button, you can see the lights obviously come on, but also it lets you know when the lights are on. So I click that off. Indication wise, when your indicators are on, it also flashes with the indicator on there as well. Now, one more thing I wanna show you is when you press the up arrow and the down arrow together, hold them down, you can get into the P settings on the display. So there's 20 settings on here that you can change. And that's things like zero start, how much power you're using, uh, what size tires you're using, etc., etc. They can all be customized. So once you're done with that, you're ready to go. Okay, that concludes looking at the specs up close and personal in the studio. And now I'm gonna swap this cap for a helmet and we're gonna hit the trails.
off we go. This Phantom can handle a lot of different terrains. See, I'm bouncing all the way down these routes, muddy trail, sliding out on corners. Jesus. Whoa! Look at it. Whoa! I just want to give a shout out to the guy who's filming me today, Luke Watley Big. He's on a one wheel going over 20 miles an hour at times on these crazy tracks. So big shout out to him. Cruising along, single motor mode, really bumpy track. Suspension making it feel comfortable. Deck's wide, I've got size 11 feet. It's comfortable for me. I'm 85 kilos, my bag, coat and everything probably closer to 90, taking the weight easily. Oh, it's getting slippery now. Going into dual motor. Here we go. Oh, 20, 3, 27, 30, 34 miles an hour. Oh, and the wheelie. It's nice to handle. You can turn it really nicely. It doesn't feel like it's pulling you one way or another. Nice and maneuverable. Oh, I'd say it's not quite as powerful as the um, 10X 60 volt, but it's very smooth. And that thumb throttle comes as standard, making it really easy to pull away. Judge your speed. So really trying to test what this Phantom can do. Whoa, nearly flipped over the front. We're kicking a really steep climb here, it's really fiddly. Look what kind of torque we've got going up this hill. Really tight, whoa, it's biting. <laughs> whoa. It's a really nice scoop to try and do little wheelies on. Feel very in control when you're riding it. Nice wide handlebars. This model's only got the mechanical brakes on. I'd probably go for the hydraulic, just for the speeds it can go. We took it on the track and it went up to 40 mile an hour. So anything going that fast really, I wanted hydraulic brakes on, but the discs work really well. As you see, it feels like I'm just cruising. Really bumpy. It's handling it so well. So in single motor, it feels like most single motor scooters, Nice and easy, not pulling you away too much. I'll flick it into dual. Really do get that sense of acceleration on there. You can bring it back down. The one thing I'd say is that when you're in dual motor, until you get up to speed, it's a little bit jerky. So those slow speeds in dual motor aren't that smooth, but then I guess you'd be just in single motor then anyway. So it's not a big thing. Best feature of this scooter, really easy to use, very intuitive. Buttons are nice and big, with gloves on, easy to press. Deck's nice and wide, I feel very comfortable. Thumb throttle's super smooth, like I said, on single, and then when you're going faster on dual, it's really nice as well. The suspension is lovely. We are going over all sorts of bumps right now, and it's handling them with ease. I don't feel uncomfortable at all. Top end speed isn't as fast as some of the 60 volt scooters out there, like the Thunder or the Vasset 10 Plus, but this is a 52. Slightly different, a bit more smooth, a bit more manageable, but still has that bite when you want to pull away. All in all, a really nice scooter to ride. So we've hit the trails. That was pretty epic. We've done a full speed run. We've got 40 mile an hour on the track, two times in a row. Now we're heading for the hill climb. We're going to try it in single motor and dual motor and see what the Phantom can do. Right, we're at the bottom of the hill. First, we're going to try the test in single motor. I'm not having a running start. So we're right at the base of the hill and we're going to hit the climb immediately. So off we go. I'm going to go flat out single motor. Okay, so we're on about 60% battery, 70% battery. So we've been quite a long way through the ride. We've hit this steep slope. I just want to show you how steep this is. You might not get the idea. If I let go of the brake, we roll back down pretty quick. So it's a very steep slope here. And it's sort of poodled up in single gear. It was fast at first, but when it gets steeper and steeper, it was still climbing, but pretty slow. I'm going to go back down the bottom and try with a double motor, and hopefully that will pull us up a lot faster. It 
So, as you can imagine, dual motor, completely different, pulling me up the hill. I was actually accelerating up the hill. And again, like I said, if you want to see how steep the hill is, just watch how quick that falls back down. So it's a really steep hill. And single motor, crawled up it, dual motor, absolutely flew up the hill. Okay, we're now gonna test the acceleration, zero to 10, zero to 20, zero to 30 miles per hour. Okay, GPS tracker. Here we go, three, two, one. Okay, just finished the acceleration test. Zero to 10, 1.8 seconds. Zero to 20, 3.7 seconds. Zero to 30, 7.6 seconds. Now, the ground's a little bit wet, so we were spinning up a bit, but I'm pretty sure we can't get much faster than that. That felt very, very quick on a 52 volt. A really nice performance out of the Phantom. So, that is the first brake test from 10 mile per hour down to zero. We've got the Phantom with the mechanical brakes. We get all the way to the front wheel. So you're looking at 2.8 meters from 10 miles per hour down to zero with the mechanical brakes. Ground slightly damp. Now we're gonna try from 20 mile an hour. That was zero to 20 miles an hour. So four and 3.9, 7.9 meters to the front wheel. So at 20 mile per hour, 7.9 meters. The ground is quite wet, mechanical disc brakes. Now for the final test, we're gonna hit 30 mile an hour. See how much more that goes. Okay, zero to 30 mile per hour. 13.7 meters at 30 mile an hour. 13.7 meters, it's only 40 feet. That is a long distance. I know the ground's a bit wet and that would be better maybe with hydraulics and maybe if the ground was dry, there would be a difference. But braking speeds are really, really important to know when you're traveling at speeds. So the Phantom handles the hard ground really well. And it also handles the off-road amazingly well too. See how bumpy this is and how long this grass is. It's just gripping on, powering through. And once you're really done with that, hop off, back onto the smooth. This scooter is so fun. Jumping off all sorts of things. Ripping around. See that big jump there. So just playing around on it now. We've hit all the different types of terrain. It's really nice on this smooth, hard ground. You can really, feels like a scooter you can mess around on doing little wheelies and skids, little endos and things. Fun scooter, comfortable suspension. It's a really good all-rounder. The 52 volt means that it's not ridiculously powerful, but it can still get you up the hills and you can still get a thrill with the acceleration if you want to. But for those crazy riders out there that love the speed, you probably want to be going for more voltage, more powerful motors. But 2,400 nominal, it's pretty powerful. 23 and a half amp hour battery, it's gonna take you a long way so it's a really, really good all-rounder, lovely design. Like I said before, display when the light hits it could be better. And I think a cruise control function would be amazing. So finally, we're back from a day of reviewing the Apollo Phantom. We had a really in-depth review in the studio. We then took it to the track, got 40 mile per hour out of it, genuine mileage with a GPS tracker. We did an entire range test, got 45 miles with a 75 kg rider. That wasn't just trying to go 10 mile an hour in eco mode. That was 10, 15 mile per hour a lot of the time, sometimes going up to 30, 32 miles per hour. And we got 45 miles, so a really good battery life. We took it off-roading, obviously, testing the suspension, the tires, the strength, the durability of the scooter did some big drop-offs and really put it through its paces. It handled it all very, very well. The braking distances were pretty good considering it was damp. We even took it out in damp conditions. They are mechanical. Obviously, you can get the hydraulic. That would have increased it. Um, the shorten the distances a little bit. We did acceleration. The acceleration for a 52 volt was very good as well. In my opinion, a really, really good all-round scooter. It's not the fastest scooter on the market. It's probably not the most comfortable scooter on the market, but it's very comfortable, very quick. So if you want any more information on the Phantom or any other products that we sell, go to www.rideandglide.co.uk. Give us a call, send us a live chat, get us on email. We're always available to talk or alternatively come down and have a demo yourself. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.